talk about that uh, as time goes on. <laughs> Certainly, Matt Miller and Betsy Woodruff, thank you for uh, hanging with me there as we're juggling a few different balls in the air. Appreciate it. Julia Yaffe is a staff writer for The Atlantic covering Russia and U.S. politics. Naveed Jamali is an MSNBC contributor, former FBI double agent who infiltrated Russian intelligence. And Naveed, for that reason, I'll start with you. Um, the, the scope of this, the granularity of it, I mean, just as an intelligence professional, you sort of have to take a step back and kind of... Uh, be impressed, uh, it just the, 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 the sheer scope of the trade craft here. Absolutely, and you know what, Chris, what jumped out at me was the thing that wasn't mentioned here, and that was specifically one of the last things President Obama did in December of 2016 was throw out essentially the totality of the Russian intelligence operations here in the United States. He threw out 35 uh, Russian diplomats, which is, uh, in fact, what Flynn was talking to Kislyak. So when President Trump comes out and says this clears him, I think that, you know, that dotted line is, is still a dotted line. It has not been connected to the, uh, the, the bona fide Russian yep. intelligence officers and sort of these what we call knocks, non-official cover. These are people who are uh, operating under uh, false uh, false cover. Well, um, I think that is an interesting thing, and it is, it is clearly going to be part of this. You know, we know Russia was involved in this. We know when they say, by the way, when they say intelligence collection, uh, that is an innocuous word, but let's be honest, that means spying. So there were people here who were recruiting spies, who were gathering I, intelligence, and, and I think that's an important I, point. I keep picturing this, Julia. I picture these, uh, these, these folks you know, driving around Nevada, like stopping, getting gas, getting the rental car. I don't know what they're doing. And they just like having political conversations in diners like American political reporters do. Are they watching cable news? But the, the, you know, the, the scope of this, it's something that you and I have spoken about on the air and in other venues in which you've said what's so remarkable to you about the operation was that it showed a level of political sophistication of the grasp of American politics that you had not seen from Russian operations in Washington before. What, what is your takeaway from reading the indictment? Well, one takeaway is that it reminds me a lot of the indictment that was issued um, when the illegals were caught in 2010. I don't know if yep. you remember that. Anna Chapman and a bunch of other spies. And it also got really deep in the weeds of, of their operations. And it was, you know, at that point it was going to think tank events and reading newspapers and kind of radioing back to Moscow. But that was, you know, 2007, 2008, the internet wasn't quite as advanced. It is interesting that they felt this time that they still had to go and get on the ground when a lot of stuff was readily available online. They could have done it you know, from the comfort of foggy St. Petersburg. Well, there's also a granularity here, Naveed, in what they were up to that I find sort of remarkable. They paid people to dress as Hillary behind bars, right? Defendants and their co-conspirators asked one U.S. person to build a cage on a flatbed truck and another U.S. person to wear a costume portraying Clinton in a prison uniform. Defendants and their co-conspirators paid these individuals to complete the request. And the fact is that meme, Hillary for prison, it was not just the, the Russians that came up with it. But they played a role in furthering what became an extremely, extremely common meme in the American electorate. Yeah, yeah, look, and to what Julia is saying, I am very skeptical. Having sat down with the Russians, having sat down with Russian intelligence officers, my sense here is that Russia understands U.S. sort of customs and politics from an, as an outsider. And I, it, it tends to be that it feels like there are more than just the Russians involved. There had to have been Americans directing, whether wittingly or unwittingly, advising them of how to do this. This is far too targeted for someone in huh. Russia to kind of figure out the specifics of it. That's what they do. I'm sh I am sure. I go back to that intelligence collection again that is that is code for spying to me that means that they were recruiting the other part of this was they didn't go into detail they were recruiting US persons to do the part of their bidding well we're gonna get well the, the, yeah, the indictment go goes goes into that about the Americans they contacted the Americans they paid the other thing I think that we need to not overlook in this indictment is the extent to which the Russians sought to help Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein and to suppress the vote so it wasn't just about Hillary versus Trump it was also about you know anybody but Hillary or stay home and don't vote. That is a great point. This was this was a tar if there was a target of it, it was an anti-Hillary operation they were running, and that could be Jill Stein, that could be Bernie Sanders, that could be Donald Trump, that could be suppressing voters of color, um, which is which was a clear objective. Yeah, Julia. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say was there's no chance in hell, essentially, that any of these 13 Russians are going to see justice in the U.S. The, the U.S. And, and Russia don't have an extradition treaty. 
there, there's no way we're ever going to see these people here, fa face trial here. But this is kind of a shot across the bow to the Trump administration. You know, no collusion, no collusion. We keep hearing this from the White House and saying, you know, that, that all of this is a witch hunt, that this is a democratic uh, delusion. And here Trump is se sending a very, this is not to the, a message to the Russians. This is a message to the president and his base saying, no collusion? How about all this? Well, and, and we should say this. We don't know what is out after this. I mean, we're going to talk about this for most of the show today. But, you know, there's a bunch of things about the, 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 the hacking that we still don't know. But one thing, Naveed, from a counterintelligence standpoint, Robert Mueller sure does seem to know a lot. I mean, at one point, he quotes an email that one of these alleged co-conspirators sent to the family. I think we, we read it in the intro, basically being like, we got busted by the FBI, I'm covering my tracks. And you read that in the indictment and you think, wow, they've got eyes on a lot here. It's sources and methods, Chris. And, you know, I, I come back, the, the starting date of 2014 is so interesting to me. Um, and someone who has sort of covered this other, other character, Carter Page, in this, the fact that Carter Page was involved in this 2015 case, and Carter Page actually met with uh, Russian SVR officers in 2013 in New York, there's a nexus here. There's a nexus to all of these operations. There's a nexus to the 35 Russian intelligence officers that yeah. President threw, uh, Obama threw out. There's going to be more that's going to drop, and we'll certainly see, a, not the dotted line, but a solid line that points squarely back to Russia. Final point to you, Julia. One thing that is not in the indictment is Vladimir Putin or the Russian government. Everything is contained in the world of the Internet uh, Research Agency. Uh, this one individual, Yevgeny Prigozhin, uh, who uh, runs a catering business. Um, and it, what, what do you, knowing all you do about Russia and the reporting there, what does that relationship look like? It's a very, very close relationship. In Russia, he's known as Putin's chef. And this is very much in keeping with how the Russians do things, right? There's never going to be, or probably not going to be, any, finger, any of Putin's fingerprints on this, right? Probably what it looked like was Putin essentially saying, you know, who will rid me of this, you know, troublesome Hillary. Right. And, and everybody else kind of gets what that means and swings into action. But it's all, you know, trusted entities. And plausible deniability is, has always been a crucial, yeah. crucial part of this. We saw this in Crimea in 2014 and further on. There I, has to be, there's always a bit of distance between Putin and the I, executors. I remember uh, covering those, uh, uh, those soldiers without flags on their uniforms, one of the creepiest things uh, I've ever That's seen. Right. Julia Yaffe and Naveed Jamali, great to have you. Uh, one of the more notable things about the announcement today of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's indictment of Russian individuals and companies accused of interfering in the 2016 presidential election 